Fantasy headliners feeling real good right now because we are only a few hours away from kickoff. The 2022 season is almost here. I'm let's screw it. It is here. It's here already, and we're feeling great right now. The content is flowing. Games are getting ready to start. Based on the comments, y'all are loving what we're doing so far this season now for this video today i've got my top 36 wide receivers and top 12 tight ends but don't forget we have got flex rankings this year that is right by popular popular demand comments and comments of the last couple of years please do flex rankings we're doing them members only style that is right if you are interested in getting our weekly flex rankings Hit that blue join button down below for as little as $5 a month. You can get all the extra content that we do here on the channel. If you decide to bump up to the $10 or the $20 tier, then you get full access to our Discord, which is absolutely lit. A lot of fun to be in. And then that excessive chub tier at $20 a month gets you a ticketing system in Discord that guarantees answers to all of your questions. So if you are not already a member, I would encourage you to think about becoming one. Not only are you gonna get some great stuff out of it, but <laughs> we've got a custom frame Jamar Chase autographed jersey we're gonna give away when we get to a thousand members. So make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Leave me a comment down below after the rankings are done and let me know who you're most excited about watching this week. But it is go time, baby. Let's jump into it and let's talk about wide receivers receivers first and we're going to kick it off with Cooper Cup Thursday night football against Buffalo it might be one of his tougher matchups coming up but that's okay we don't care we're rolling with Cooper Cup coming off way too good of a season to even consider having him anywhere but number one Justin Jefferson at number two even with Jair Alexander Covering all over him this week. I'm not worried about it. We're going him with, with him at number two. Devontae Adams in the connection with Derek Carr is going to feel real good this season. We're going with him at number three against the L.A. Chargers. Uh, Jamar Chase going up against Pittsburgh. Talked about this one a little bit in the start sit video. Ceiling might be a little bit lower for me this week, but not too much. Stefan Diggs at number five. He's going to see some Jalen Ramsey, but he's not going to see Jalen Ramsey the entire game. I went over Jalen Ramsey splits earlier to let you know that. C.D. Lamb, he's going to get a ton of volume going up against Tampa Bay, and they might be throwing it quite a bit as well. Debo Samuel going up against Chicago all over the place. They're going to be still utilizing him some of the same way that we saw last year maybe not all the runs that we saw last year but he's still going to be doing a lot of those screen passes short routes some big plays as well excited to see what they keep doing with Debo Michael Pittman Jr. going up against the Houston Texans I think Matt Ryan and Michael Pittman are really going to be feeling each other and that Houston game is going to be one where Indianapolis really wants to get that bad taste out of their mouth from last season that ended so poorly with them not end up making the so yeah, let's go Let's go. That last time we saw them on the field, they were going up against Jacksonville, and it did not turn out well. Tyreek Hill against New England. Him and Waddle are going to be a little bit different this week in terms of, I believe, Tyreek Hill is going to have some really big plays, but maybe not the volume that Waddle does, but those big plays are going to be enough to put him in the top 10. Mike Evans, yes, some of you made the comment. Though the last time he faced Stephon Diggs, he held him to 30. It was one time. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. Mike Evans is an absolute beast. I think he's going to have a great game tonight. Or not not tonight, but this week, Sunday night. A.J. Brown going up against Detroit. His ceiling could even end up going a little bit higher. The only concern I have, and I'm going to this game, so it hurts me to say it a little bit, is that if Philadelphia gets out in front of Detroit by quite a bit, that maybe they kind of just pull the, pull the, uh, pull the dogs off just a little bit. Maybe they don't go full send in week one against the Lions. We'll see. Lions defense has their hands full. Keenan Allen at number 12 going up against Las Vegas. Uh, I know I've got Mike Williams right behind him at number 14. Keenan Allen is going to continue to see that volume, but Mike Evans has got himself a really nice matchup as well. Both of these guys, great opportunity plays this week. T Higgins at number 13 against Pittsburgh. Jamar Chase is going to see a lot of focus this week. It could be a good week for T Higgins to get himself in some nice volume. 
Darnell Mooney at number 15. The ceiling isn't as high for me as some of these other players. That's why he's a little bit lower in the rankings. But my confidence, my confidence meter that we had in the start sit video was very high because I do believe he is going to fall right in this area for you. And I'm loving him to return good fantasy value, even if his ceiling isn't quite as high as the other players. Cortland Sutton, not really a revenge game for Russell Wilson, but Russell Wilson is going to look to kind of show up Seattle a little bit. I like Cortland Sutton to be his big time playmaker. Jalen Waddle again, talked about him with Tyreek Hill. Waddle for me, lots of volume this week. Maybe if the plays aren't not, not necessarily as big as what Tyreek Hill may have. DJ Moore at number 18. Again, love the opportunity, but the ceiling isn't quite as high as some of these other guys. Marquise Brown at number 19. I do like the opportunity going up against, against Kansas City. I do think we're going to get the running game going a little bit with James Conner. We're going to see Zach Ertz out there moving forward a little bit as well. I like Marquise Brown uh, going up against Kansas City. Terry McLaurin against Jacksonville. I'd like to go higher with Terry McLaurin, but we haven't seen how he really feels with Carson Wentz yet. Brandon Cooks going up against Indianapolis. I'm really scared about this Indianapolis secondary. It is, it's going to be devastating. Playing Indianapolis every single week for teams is going to be very, very tough. This defense could end up being one of the best in the league. Brandon Cooks for me is going to have probably enough volume this week, but he's not going to have the ceiling that I would like. Deontay Johnson kind of nursing a little bit of an injury right now. Not necessarily questionable for this week, but he is in a position where not really feeling the best. So we're going to have to continue to monitor that as the week goes on. DK Metcalf at number 23. The ceiling is not going to be there as of yet with Geno Smith. Maybe it gets there at some point this season. But for me, if you're starting him, you're starting him hoping for wide receiver two numbers and thinking, hey, if he ends up hitting higher, that's great. But we're not starting him like we did in the past, thinking this is a guy that had top wide receiver one potential. No more. Amon Ross St. Brown going up against Philadelphia is going to have a tough matchup in the slot against Maddox. That is okay. I believe they're going to get him moved around, and when they move him around, it's going to get an opportunity to find some open space. Gabe Davis at number 25. I'd like to go higher with Gabe Davis this week. I'm not sitting Gabe Davis, but again, it's one of those things where you have to understand just because we believe that a player might have like a really safe floor and our confidence scale says, hey, we really like this guy. We really like this guy at the ranking that we're going to be putting them in. So Gabe Davis, I really like him in this area because I think the volume is going to be there. Now, the big plays may not be there this week, especially considering that we're going to see, I think, a little bit of Dawson Knox really get involved this week. Stefan Diggs, if Jalen Ramsey comes over to Gabriel Davis, if he goes back, if he's moving back and forth, that is the reason why I'm kind of saying, all right, with Gabe Davis, the ceiling might not be there, but I like the floor. I like the opportunity still, and I think this is a safe, accurate ranking for him. Uh, Allen Robinson, this is going to be a tough one for him as well. Luckily, we don't need to worry about him being the number one. He's the number two. But with that being said, Buffalo's secondary is still good. Allen Robinson should see enough volume. I do like a better opportunity for him knowing that Van Jefferson is going to be out this week. Christian Kirk at number 27. Again, a guy that I really like this week as well. In the slot, great matchup against Washington. I think we're going to see a really safe game for Christian Kirk. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, though, how high are you going to take the offense? Christian Kirk could end up going higher, but for me, not really knowing how good this offense is going to be yet, how good the offensive line is going to be, how the connection is there with Kirk, we're going to be a little bit safer with the ranking this week. Brandon Ayuk, I just, with Brandon Ayuk, I like the opportunity. I do think his ceiling could end up being a little bit higher, a little bit. But I'm kind of waiting on George Kittle right now. George Kittle dealing with a little bit of a growing injury. Talk to Dr. Dr. Ethan Turner. Ethan said, hey, listen, probably tweaked it a little bit. Going to end up being just fine. We'll monitor it throughout the week. But as of right now, the plan is, is that we believe George Kittle is going to play. So because of that, Brandon Ayuk is a little bit lower. Now, if George Kittle were to go out, we're sending Ayuk even higher. Hunter Renfro at number uh, 29 this week. I think a good, safe option for him. And number 30, I have Juju Smith-Schuster. Now, Juju was barely, barely a sit on our start and sit video. Why was that? Well, I said it in the video multiple times, and several of you still made comments to show me that you weren't listening. You got to listen to the videos. Don't just look at the charts. Listen to what we're saying. The reason he was listed as a sit is because the production and the volume from last year was not there. So it threw the scale off. But we're using past numbers to, to push us into a decision for the coming week. 
And I even said there, there is a good chance that Juju Smith-Schuster would end up being a start this week. However, I wasn't going to go too high with him because I don't know how the offense is going to look yet. I've got him at number 30. I think this is a safe ranking, allowing for a little bit of ceiling. If you got him as a wide receiver, three, perfect. If you got him as a wide receiver, two, not bad. If you've got someone else on your bench that might be a little bit of a higher ceiling, maybe we go with him. But Juju isn't just necessarily a, hey, we're throwing him on the bench and done. That is why I beg all of you, listen to the videos. Don't just look at the charts and move on. Holy cow. Jarvis Landry at number 31. I definitely like this matchup for him. Now the ceiling won't be there because we've got so many playmakers, but I really like his opportunity this week. Definitely talked about him as a prize picks going over on his 40 receiving yards. Adam Thielen at number 32. We got to score. If we can get him in the end zone, we're good. Will the volume be there? I like the way this offense is looking so far. Will it push higher? Isaiah McKenzie. Out of the slot, Thursday night football. Kind of a surprise maybe for some of you to see him inside the top 36 here. I like him this week. Jerry Judy and Rashad Bateman back and back here at 34 and 35. I'm not really trusting either of the guys this week until I see a little bit more from the offense. I know Cortland Sutton down the field, big plays is going to be there. But then you've got Jerry Judy competing for targets with an Albert Are You Okay, potentially with a KJ Hamler. I like Jerry Judy a lot, but week one, before I have an opportunity to see how really the rest of the offense plays out, I'm being cautious with it, people. That's the only reason I have him listed so low this week. Uh, Michael Thomas at number 36. I got to see him on the field. I got to see him healthy. I got to see him ready to go. I got to see him making those sharp cuts. I got to see him producing. The last time Michael Thomas scored a touchdown, we didn't even know what COVID-19 was. Tom Brady hadn't had a million dollars of plastic surgery. All right? Listen to me. Be careful with Michael Thomas. We are seeing some real true live game action from him for the first time in over a year. We are not running him out there just because right now. I would rather be like, hey, I missed on week one than sitting him out there and later be like, I knew I shouldn't have trusted it. Oh, by the way, he's been banged up this preseason again already. And then just to take one step back again real quick, Rashad Bateman at number 35. This is going to be a tough matchup. He might be drawing Sauce Gardner this week. I mean, listen, be careful with it. You might hate me for having him this low. You might hate me for having him a set. But if this defense in New York is what we think it could end up being. Bateman's going to have a really tough week this week. All right, real quick, a couple a couple notable players just outside the top 36 as well. Elijah Moore, yes, the last time he was on the field with Joe Flacco, they looked good, but they didn't have Garrett Wilson. They didn't have a healthy Corey Davis. They didn't have Brees Hall, and they didn't bring in a couple of tight ends to help improve this team either. So keep that in mind with Elijah Moore that the ceiling might not be there just because it was there one game last year where the dude was really the only option. Amari Cooper just got him outside of the top 36 right now. I think the floor is safe, but the ceiling is not there for me. Uh, Kadarius Tony, I've got him as a start this week, but no ceiling. I think we're going to see some volume, but I don't know if those big plays are going to be available for him yet. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. And we're going to have to see how just the wide receiver situation just sorts itself out there. And if they're trying to run the ball quite a bit with Saquon to control that game. MVS, Marquez Valdez Scantling. I think he has a lot of upside for a big play this week, but the, the floor, the floor is just boom down below until we know a little bit more about how that offense will look like. And then Jacoby Myers, I like him in the slot this week. I think this is a guy that could see anywhere between six to 10 targets, but I don't know if the plays will that be that big. So even though the volume will be there, I don't know if his ranking will really take him up high enough for me to put him into the top 36 yet. But let's go ahead and skedaddle on over to the tight end position. Let's talk about my top 12 tight ends. Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, probably going to be one and two on this list all season long. Let's just face it, they're that good. Kyle Pitts going up against New Orleans. I do think the New Orleans defense is, is feeling themselves a, you know, a little bit more than they were last year. They're feeling uh, that the, the defense has improved a little bit. So Kyle Pitts, I do believe the volume is going to be there. How high is he going to be able to climb? And quite honestly, George Kittle would be over Kyle Pitts for me right now if it wasn't for us waiting on that growing right now to see how it would be playing out. But I'm still going to leave George Kittle at number four. Dalton Schultz at number five. Uh, outside of Mark Andrews and Travis Kelsey might be the safest tight end 
this week. Absolutely love what he can do against Tampa Bay. Dallas, go there if you're feeling fancy going up against Detroit. Talked about in the start and sit video. I think on the outside, Devonta Smith, if he faces over Warrior, we're going to see him with a little bit of a tougher matchup, which could leave the door open for Dallas Goddard. TJ Hawkinson, he's a prize picks prop for me this week. I like his opportunity against Philadelphia, especially knowing that Philadelphia is going to be so tough against the wide receivers. Darren Waller going up against the Los Angeles Chargers. We know he's been banged up. How's he feeling right now? Dawson Knox on Thursday Night Football. Really feel like he could make a jump up to maybe tight end six, tight end five, especially if he were to score a touchdown. Zach Ertz, we're still kind of waiting on to hear a little bit more on him, but him going up against Kansas City, I like Zach Ertz this week. David Njoku, I think, is in for a big week going up against Carolina. We're just going to be a little bit safer with the ranking. I don't want to get too crazy with it this week as we kind of anticipate what his role is going to be in that offense, but I like him as a tight end one this week. Albert, are you okay, is going to round out the top 12. Albert, are you okay? Definitely a guy I foresee going up, uh, going up against Seattle that could have at least good touchdown upside this week now don't forget okay if you're interested in seeing some more of the rankings and what else that we have to offer you hit the blue join button down below we're going to be posting our flex rankings also they'll be coming out before thursday night football to help you make decisions for your flex members only video so make sure that you check that out but headliner nation I love all of you. Appreciate all the support. The views are through the roof right now. Your support is absolutely incredible. Jake, Taylor, Mac, myself, Dr. Ethan, we're feeling great about the way things look for 2022, and it really is because of all of you. So hit the like button for me. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a comment down below, and I'm going to get out of here and get ready to get those flex rankings posted for you members. Peace out, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Fantasy Headlines.